The political implications of the Age of Reason brought the established church, state, and school under critical examination and attack. One of the outcomes from the Enlightenment was that ideas should not stand simply because they are traditional. And from the ashes of oppression in the American Revolution, a new style of government was to be established, one based on liberty with limited authority. A new constitution was ratified, however it contained no specific references to education. Americans recognized the relationship between the republic and the school and acknowledged that a uniquely American type of education must be designed to reinforce patriotism and nationalism. Education would need to serve a political purpose, and the notion of progress would be paramount. Many American educational theorists came forward proposing ideas of how to best educate the masses for the new American Republic. Distrusting classical schools, Benjamin Franklin, the self-educated, self-made man, proposed plans for utilitarian education. Robert Karam related educational equality to social equality. Future President Thomas Jefferson proposed the bill for the more general diffusion of knowledge, arguing that a better educated populace would result in a freer and happier American public. He called for widespread public education. While all of these contained elements strictly American, they were also part of the intellectual developments surging through the Enlightenment. Fourteen years after the American Revolution, France found itself in a similar upheaval. However, unlike the American colonists who were fighting over home rule, the French Revolution was about who should rule at home. The French peasants and bourgeois took up arms against King Louis XVI, desiring social and political reform. With the storming of the Bastille in 1789, the French revolutionaries took control of Paris. They destroyed the remains of feudalism and serfdom. They eventually beheaded King Louis XVI and rapidly turned France into a republic. Education in the new French Republic rejected the role the church had previously played in schooling and took on ideas from the Americans in that education should be to benefit the republic. Teacher training would be a top educational priority with a curriculum that included republican morality and public and private virtues as well as teaching techniques. Educational policy was extremely centralized as the National Convention published and prescribed all books. All instruction was to be in French, showing the country's unity under a common language. However, despite revolution and reform, France remained politically volatile. Neither equality nor fraternity can be achieved through force by the state and a stable government was never established. Unfulfilled promises of social equality and anti-poverty measures led to political and social upheaval, resulting in the reign of terror. A nine-month period of mass executions of all presumed enemies of the state, where over 16,000 people were sent to the guillotine. Directed by the Committee of Public Safety, the revolutionary government's terror was a dictatorship, instituted to rule the country in a national emergency. But another change was quickly following. In 1799, Napoleon Bonaparte seized power in a coup d'etat, and in 1802 he crowned himself emperor, marking the beginning of France's imperial phase. Under him, France was turned into a modern totalitarian state, freedom of speech and press was suppressed, and schools were reformed to indoctrinate students to follow him without question. Education was under his rule and characterized by intellectual repression. Lycées were established for post-secondary patriotic indoctrination, and it wasn't until after World War I did they switch from educating the elite to educating the masses. Students today now have the option of choosing between general or technical education. While Napoleon's reign ended at Waterloo, his impact on French education did not, as it is still highly centralized today. Occurring alongside was the Industrial Revolution, propelled by the Enlightenment's focus on scientific thinking, encouraging mechanical and technological innovations. This revolution would result in a rapid transition into the modern age. While this propelled human progress to extraordinary levels, it came at a devastating cost to our environment, with the effects still being seen today. Across the industrialized world, dissatisfaction and poverty among the working classes often resulted in strikes, civil disorders, and violence. Urbanization also greatly affected socioeconomic class structure. Class-based political movements arose, resulting in liberalism, conservatism, and socialism. These ideologies were not new to the 19th century, though it was now that they gained formal structure. Most closely related to the ideas of the Enlightenment, liberalism is the philosophical underpinning of Western fundamental institutions. Liberals champion for a modern, efficient self-government, stressing the rights and freedoms of the individual, advocating for private property, and constitutional guarantees of freedom of religion and press. Many of these ideas, in fact, fueled the American Revolution. 
Industrialization allowed for a greater diffusion of knowledge due to the more centralized population, making large-scale national school systems a reality, with education focusing on scientific and practical knowledge. Liberalism split in the late 19th century, with modern liberals bringing the strength of the government back into the economy, and today, U.S. classical liberalism would most closely align with current conservative ideologies. Championed by Edmund Burke, who had been horrified by the French Revolution, conservatism argued for gradual change. They believe the proper role of education is to prepare youth so that they may assume their predetermined place in society. Believing the community to be more important than the individual, rights therefore came from society and not from nature. Conservatism doesn't reject change, but believes it needs to be incremental rather than revolutionary, as humans have a tendency to irrational behavior. To maintain this stability, there are three essential components, monarchy, aristocracy, and the church. Government needs a wide reach into the lives of the citizens so that each citizen could increase the power of the nation. Responding to the negative effects of the Industrial Revolution, socialism found a place among the urban working class. Socialism has a collectivist ideology, believing that an economy based on the free market was both irrational and unjust. Schools under socialism would foster an ethical system based on the community's welfare, believing that education could unify the interests of all social classes. Small utopian communities began to develop where all resources would be shared equally. However, both economically and practical as well as politically, these utopians failed. To date, while some countries may have aspects of socialism, every single place that has tried socialism in its purest form has been unsuccessful. Nevertheless, their faith that repressive governments could be changed were inspiring and sowed the seed of social movements for decades to come. Nationalism is the conviction that one's highest loyalty should be to that of their nation. It has been a major force in education with emphasis placed on learning the national language, history, and literature. Although nationalism has a unity that spans socioeconomic and political class lines, it cannot be overlooked as a major contributor to World War I and an end to the old order of life.